BBC's North and South is a wonderful TV miniseries that was released in 2004 and is based off of the novel by Elizabeth Gaskell. It stars the lovely Daniela Denby Ash and Richard Armitage, and is not to be confused with the very famous Civil War TV miniseries North and South. This movie has absolutely nothing to do with the Civil War and instead takes place in mid 19th century England. It centers around the young, strong-willed, and independent Margaret Hale, who grew up in the warmth of southern England. Her father, a clergyman, finds himself in an awkward position with the church, so he decides to move them to northern England and into the heart of the Industrial Revolution. During this time, northern society was very different from that of the south. The people of both areas tended to be very proud of their respective societies, sometimes even expressing hostility towards the other. Observe. Henry, do you know Mr. Thornton? Mr. Thornton? All the way from Milton? My brother is interested in dabbling in cotton. I'm not sure I'm the one to speak to. I'm not sure I'd know how to dabble. So we've got the southern Mr. Lennox who clearly thinks the cotton industry is a senseless venture and trivial occupation. Then, on the other hand, we have Mr. Thornton. I must go. You may enjoy the machinery like an exhibit in the zoo. I have to go and live with it. I must get back to Milton today. Thornton views Lennox as a snobby, ignorant man who's never worked hard a day in his life. Now Lennox decides to fight Derby. He brings in the woman. See, they don't know it, but both of them have proposed and been turned down by Margaret. Lennox was first. Listen, Margaret. Please, don't continue. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Boom. Friend zoned. Fast forward through two hours of movie and you have Mr. Thornton's. Say all my feelings for you are very strong. Please, stop. Please, please don't go any further. Excuse me. So Margaret is clearly a sensitive subject for them both. Lennox uses this weakness to win his North versus South argument. Give our regards to the Hale. You must tell them how the London break is suiting Miss Hale. Don't you think, Thornton? Doesn't Miss Hale look well? So this clip shows a couple things. Firstly, the Northerners and the Southerners don't always get along. They both see their society as superior to the other. Second, we see how much power a woman in this time period actually has over a man. While men still make the obvious executive decisions, women hold the key to the heart of a man. Beyond just the political debate between regions, this movie also provides an awesome perspective of the social divide within the cotton mills themselves. It's the owners versus the workers. One of the owners lays out his opinion pretty clearly. Yeah, you've got to keep them on their toes. It's a war, and we masters have to win it or go under. Period. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, the workers are fighting to be acknowledged by the owners. Listen! No! No violence! Masters expect us to behave like animals. We will show them we are thinking men. We will not be outthought. The only enemy of the strike is ourselves. This is it. We keep together. Friday evening it is! Friday! So the mill owners struggle to keep the workers under control and think they're animals. And the workers see the owners as greedy tyrants. A lot of stuff happens next. Basically, the workers follow through with a strike, and the hardship that ensues brings out weaknesses on both sides. The masters can't keep the mills closed for too long. And the workers can't go for too long without money. In the midst of all this turmoil, there is, of course, a love story. Because this movie is, after all, underneath the genre romance on Netflix. Mr. Thornton gets another chance with Margaret. Yes! And this is where, once again, the power of the 19th century woman comes into play. Thornton ends up breaking the strike by bringing in workers from Ireland. Great! But this means that all the workers on strike are completely out of a job. So, they protest. <laughs> Let them yell. Keep up your courage for a few minutes longer, Miss Hale. I'm not afraid. But can't you pacify them? The soldiers will make them see reason. Reason? What kind of reason? Mr Thornton, go down this instant and face them like a man. Speak to them as if they were human beings. They're driven mad with hunger. Their children are starving. They don't know what they're doing. 
Go and save your innocent Irishman. Margaret's feminine kind-heartedness and sympathy help Thornton see past the rioting exterior of the workers to the human side. Later, the union leader, Nicholas Higgins, needs a job. I've been looking for work. But I'll need your help, Master, if you'll give it. Nicholas, have you been to Marlborough Mills for work? <laughs> I have been to Thornton's. The overlooker told me to be off and... told me to go away, sharpish. Would you try again? I, I should be so glad if you would. Mr. Thornton would judge you fairly, I'm sure, if given the chance. I would take my pride. I think I'd rather starve. He's skeptical, but trusts Margaret to see the good in Thornton. My name is Higgins. I'll know who you are. What do you want? I want work. Work? You've got a nerve. I'll not give you work. You're wasting your time. I knew I was. I was told to ask you by a woman thought you had a kindness about you. Will you take work with me? That's what I came here to ask. Work is work. I'll come. And what's more, I'll thank you. And that's a good deal from me. And this is a good deal from me. Margaret brought out the compassion in Thornton and the humility in Higgins. The movie North and South does a wonderful job portraying the reality of mid-19th century England and the hardships of the Industrial Revolution. It also has a pretty stellar love story. Though it will never quite be as perfect as Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, North and South is a pretty fantastic film.